Hey, what's going on? My name's Robert, and you are watching Southpaw Auto Works. This is the aluminum power glide. This video is all about the teardown of said unit. Andy is gonna be sharing some of the basics, and he'll be including some tips and tricks along the way. Without further ado, let's get this show on the road. All right, what we got for you this time is the old uh, aluminum power glide, two speed automatic transmission. It's uh, kind of like me, an oldie but a goodie. Came out in the early 60s, went away in the early 70s, and uh, was pretty popular and has become more popular now in the, uh, in the later years for uh, drag racing and other applications, which we never would have thought of back in, the, back in the day. We just used to call them the slip and slide power glide back in the day. So we're gonna tear this one down for you let you know what's inside here, give you some different information on This did replace the two-speed cast iron power glide that was already out there back in the 50s, back in your good old 55 Chevys and stuff like that. Obviously, this was a much lighter uh, unit than the cast iron one was and uh, much more popular. Uh, we'll start by taking the servo off over here. A little bit of spring tension in here, but not much to worry about as far as that goes. Servo piston here, you're covering an O-ring, no big deal. Don't have my pick handy. Let's see if we can get that out of there with a pocket screwdriver. We'll get out most of the way anyway. Pair of pliers or something, we can grab a hold of that. I'll leave that like that as it is. We'll take the uh, extension housing off as usual. Andy likes to knock the rear seal out while it's still mounted to the case. Easier way to do it rather than chasing the housing around on the bench when it's unbolted. For what it's worth, that's the same old seal they've been using since the 60s. Same as uh, Powerglide Turbo 350 and so even some of the Chrysler products. They kind of uh, worked out as using it across the board there, if you will. Let's get some more stuff off the outside of the case. Um, just a little bit of information for you here on the old Powerglide. They did use a vacuum modulator here, okay? You had a vacuum line that ran from here up across the bell housing, the back of the intake, either to intake manifold vacuum or to the base of the carburetor, had to be manifold vacuum. Means when the engine was running, when you checked that vacuum, you had to have that there, if you will, put your thumb or your finger on it, and you could feel that sucking your, your finger in against it there. That's manifold vacuum as opposed to ported vacuum, which was when you snapped the throttle open then the vacuum changed, okay? We needed a constant engine vacuum. And what they did here is kind of kind of neat. They used it over the years many, many times. The manifold vacuum that went to the modulator was actually used for what we called shift quality or shift feel, how soft or how hard the transmission shifted, okay? And then what they used here was this lever, would normally be known as like a throttle pressure or throttle lever, and that would be a direct linkage up to the carburetor. That was used to control when it shifted, what mile per hour that it shifted at. So we had when it shifted here, quality of shift here. If you wanted to on this old power glide, you could literally just unplug the vacuum line. It was like an instant shift kit, instant hard shift. Just unplug that and that would cause this to raise the line pressure in the transmission create a tougher shift or harder shift when it shifted into second gear. This guy controlled speed or when it shifted itself. So modulator normally, if it were tight, this one is not. We do have a uh, high dollar wrench that many manufacturers made. It was extra skinny to fit in there. If Robert get a shot of that. And the larger wrench or wider wrench would not fit normally between the 
case and the modulator itself. I don't think this one's actually the actual size of it, but just to give you an idea. So they made this extra skinny wrench that would fit in there so that you could uh, loosen up that modulator. Just as a side note, you don't have to buy the high dollar wrench the way I used to do it because I didn't own the wrench for many, many years was you could take a flat punch of the right width, come in against one of the flats, and then you would simply knock it a few times, break it loose. Same thing when you went back together, thread it in by hand, come across here and just smack her a few times. Didn't have to get killer on that. It's just a gasket, just to make a tight seal. So this should have a little spacer or pin, we used to call them, between the modulator and the valve itself. Now, what I'm seeing here looks like it's missing. Would have gone down into the modulator that deep to make contact with the bellows or diaphragm that's down inside here. And then it would have stuck out of the modulator quite a ways and made contact with the modulator valve that's in the case. So that's missing on this one. Let's see if the valve is in here. I believe it's in there, but there, there we go. We got our spring. And there's our valve. So between those two, we needed a pin and that's missing on this transmission. Real quick, if this content is adding value, please let us know by hitting that like button. It does help the channel and we do greatly appreciate your feedback. We'll go ahead and take our tail housing, extension housing off here. One on the bottom. <laughs> Pump's already fallen out the front. There weren't any bolts, weren't any bolts in the front pump. So, knock that loose. Okay. Just as a note here, this is where your speedometer would normally go right here in this bore. But what they've done is they've driven a core plug or freeze plug in there to block that off in this application, whatever it was, and they eliminated the speedometer. But that's where your speedometer housing, speedometer bullet would have been and where your cable would have connected to go up to the uh, speedometer on the dash. On the tail housing, here's a governor. That's what gives the transmission the uh, uh, road speed signal, if you will, to tell it how fast the vehicle is going down the road. That worked against throttle pressure to control when the thing shift, okay? We're going to leave that on there for now. What we've got here, band adjustment and lock nut. We'll go ahead and adjust, or not adjust it, but at least uh, loosen that up at this time. We've got some crud built up on there. Let's see if that'll come loose. So we back the nut off and it looks like the adjuster is going to come with it. If not, that would be an Allen wrench or Allen socket that you would use to back that off. And I'm just going to back it off a ways. We can go ahead and just take it all the way out if we want. That'll allow us to get the band struts out and get the band removed once we're uh, fully disassembled or as we're disassembling it. Long winded thing here. That would go into one of the band struts to apply to band itself or anchor to band in this case. So as we were working on it there and pulling the uh, extension housing off, the pump fell out. There were no bolts in it in this particular core. While we've got that out, let's go ahead and split that and take a look inside of it. This, by the way, to remove it, 
We could have used the pump puller that we've talked about before that clamps to the stator, pushes on the input shaft, or once again, for most of us, because we don't have the puller, you've got a couple of the uh, bolt holes here for the front pump once you remove the bolts that you can put the bolts and thread them into there, hook behind it with the little uh, pry bar or heel bar, bar and uh, pop your pump out for you. There's our pump cover or pump stator here. And of course the pump body and gears. Once again, very familiar to the other trans crescent type pump there. We'll go ahead and get the pan off. Yeah. Yeah, let's get our bolt out here. Kind of cool here back in the day. Uh, Power Glides 350, some of the other ones they actually had a drain plug from the factory. Kind of cool, allowed you to drain that fluid out if you needed to and save the mess from when you went to drop that pan down or just to do the uh, fluid change itself. Okay, we've got a metal screen type filter here. If I've got a bigger screwdriver. Oh. Take that off. Looks like somebody has changed the bolt out here and added some washers for some reason. But I thought we'd just pop this screen or filter off of there for you. Let's see if I can get that with the pocket. There we go. Not the proper bolt or screw that's supposed to be in there but that was it just a screen type filter itself this one obviously has a lot of water contamination and rust and so forth in there okay take the valve body off you don't need to remove all the bolts basically just the perimeter bolts on this i think we've got three here four in the back been a while since i've had one of these apart i think that's mainly it but we do have to remove this little plate that comes across here and at the same time we're releasing this spring in this little bracket here that's our detent roller for our uh, manual valve when you're shifting the trans back and forth there and then also notice the tube comes down in here, a feed tube that goes into that servo to uh, apply the band. We'll need to kind of lift that all off there together. Good? Yep. And I'm going to go ahead and take that one loose so we can get our spring off of there. These are, some of these bolts have been swapped out. This is actually a pump bolt right here. If you can see that, there's a pump bolt washer right there. Somebody, for some reason, has taken the bolts out of the pump and stuck them in the valve body for whatever reason. I'm not sure what they were doing there, but we would need to correct that. Those are obviously not long enough bolts. They barely are catching a thread in there. But that there, oops. And then our little bracket here that I mentioned, that helps keep the linkage from moving side to side. Keeps it hooked up to our manual valve. And then we'll take this bolt and this little bracket and the spring off. Just unhooks from there and unhooks from the uh, detent roller. So then we get to pull the valve body, try and pull this tube, come right up out of there pretty easily. Oh, there. Take the tube, comes right out. So, if we can see in here, we've got a couple of band struts. This was on the servo side. We didn't quite get the piston out, but it's starting to come out all the way. Now, I'll try and feed that out. There we go. 
Okay. Got a boxcar return spring there. If I grab a hold of that band strut just to give you an idea, that's where that would have hooked or set in place. One side going into the uh, servo piston, the other side attaches to the band here. And then there's another strut down in here, which I'll show you as we get the band out. So cobwebs, pull the input shaft, may or may not bring the drum with it. it comes out. Got a set of clutches in here, sun gear for the planetary itself. A couple of ceiling rings on the input shaft. Looks like one of them's broken here. And then our band, which would come out, and there's our other strut that I mentioned. That guy hooks into the band there. The other end would have hooked to our adjusting pin that we took out of the case earlier. Okay, next is gonna be the planetary, but in order to get that out and pull this forward, it's only gonna go so far because of the governor that's on that output shaft itself, which is connected to the, uh, to the planetary. So what we've gotta do is go around the backside of this thing. And we've got to work on getting this governor off the output shaft. So a couple things we have to do here is kill the spider first, which he's, I guess, pretty dried up. He's dead. Um, take the four bolts off here, but we've got a lockdown screw here or anchor screw that we've got to loosen up. And then we've got a pin. If Robert can get a shot of that right here, that pin goes clear through the governor, through the output shaft to the other side to another valve, or governor valve back there. So what we've got to do is take that little clip off of there, and then we're going to push that pin through to the other side. Okay. Okay. So as I said, that pin goes all the way through, makes a connection to this valve here. And then wherever my clip dropped, did it drop out of there? No, it didn't. Okay. There's our clip. What I do at this point usually is snap that clip back onto that shaft so that I don't lose it. Of course, my fingers ain't strong enough to do that right now. But anyway, we'll put the clip back on there so we don't lose it. Now, We'll take this little lockdown screw here out of the picture. Let me find a socket for that. Okay, so we get our lockdown bolt here, or anchor bolt for this governor to the uh, output chap. Take that out. It's got a little tit on the end there that locks it to the shaft. Then we should be able to slide the governor off. We don't have to unbolt it from what's called the governor support just to get the unit disassembled. Slide that off and just be aware on these, the governor valve may fall through. Okay, This one looks like it locks in place, so we're okay there. Normally during service, we'd unbolt this, take the governor off. And inspect and or clean that itself. So there's the hole where our pin went through, cleared the output shaft to activate both of the governor valves. Let's take the little support off the back. Now, knock this guy loose from the back of the case. 
We've got an O-ring here, goes around the outside. And then we've got a gasket also between that and the back of the case. As a note on this, the real early units, I don't remember the exact years, but about 62 to 65, this would have also had a pump in this rear support. And it would have looked very similar to the front pump, but it would have just been called a rear pump. Ford, Chevy, I think Chrysler even used that back in the early 60s. And it was driven by the output shaft itself. It was actually lugged or anchored to the output shaft. So unlike where the front pump on these was driven by the torque converter, always spinning at engine speed, the rear pump was only driven as long as the vehicle was moving, if you will. And uh, just as a note on that, these are vehicles that could actually be push started even though they were automatic transmission. You can actually turn the key on, place them in gear, uh, get the car rolling about 20, 25 mile an hour. That would activate the pump. And that would create enough pressure to apply a set of clutches or a band, connect you through to the engine and actually turn the engine over and it would start and run. Just had to get the vehicle moving fast enough in order for that to happen. This is a little later, probably after about 65, 66, so no rear pump in it just to support itself. Need parts and tools for your transmission rebuild? Check out the resources section in the video description down below. So now we should be able to move our planetary I'm going to roll that over so you can see better. Let me get a little more light. Thank you. More better gooder. Yeah. Okay. We could push the forward on our output shaft. Lift the planetary set here. And then we've got ring gear inside of here and clutch hub here. So we've got one more set of clutches to go down in the bottom of the case. Those are gonna be anchored by just a good old snap ring in the bottom of the case. Okay, so we've gotta get a snap ring down here out of the case to release that set of clutches in the very back. And we're gonna try and pry out on that, get a snap ring or a screwdriver behind it or something. Maybe a pick if I could find one, but what do you do with all the picks? You can try it this way. Maybe we can get it behind it. Or not. Uh, it's getting closer. Are you filming? Yep. Okay. So we're trying to get this little snap ring out of the back case. There we go. snap ring and the clutches there we go final set of clutches back in the back of the case and for final disassembly we would need to set up a spring compressor to push down on this retainer right here release the snap ring around the inside and then remove our piston from the back of the case. Okay, so we'll finish disassembly here. Take this clutch pack apart. We've got a kind of a combination plate here, which would be a pressure plate for this clutch pack and the sun gear itself for the uh, planetary gear set. Usually we can just get this output shaft to come right out of there. And then, once again, Pretty much the same thing here, pop our snap ring out. And then that should come right off of there. All right. Like I said, pressure, that becomes a pressure plate and a uh, sun gear all in one on this power glide. We've got the clutch hub itself. It's got a washer sitting on top there. With that washer is the little bushing that rides in there. 
helps to support that input shaft to the uh, clutch drum there itself. Many times back in the day, this used to be referred to as the wedding band bushing. Guys used to joke that we could uh, give that to our girl as a engagement ring, just slip it right on her finger, right out of the power glide itself. So save us a few bucks, you know. So that clutch back out. This has another little washer that sits right there. And there's our clutch back. Like it was in a smoker. Yep, this has been a little hot. You can see the discoloration in the clutch is probably there. I don't know how much detail we can get, but you can see where it was uh, kind of a lighter color in some areas and darker in the other. Obviously, it's been hot, been slipping. Now, in these power glides, they make just about everything. They remake everything the pumps themselves, they remake the drum, they make this in a billet or an aluminum to lighten it up. They make it with a piston that's cut down shorter to add more clutches. They make different planetary gear sets and different gear ratios, you name it, it's available. You can buy a new case, even one of the uh, racing cases, SFI or whatever they are certified, so that if you have an explosion or something, they're supposed to contain that within the unit itself when these guys are running some stupid amount of horsepower uh, in front of these things, so. And, Pretty much it. Valve bodies on these things were pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Pump itself, like I said, we can do a inspection video on that and then also show you how to get the uh, springs compressed in the back of the case there for that piston, get that removed so we can properly wash the uh, case itself. This show is a ton of hours to produce, and we could use your help. You can learn more by checking out the video description down below. So you just got done watching the Aluminum Power Glide teardown video. Naturally, we're gonna dedicate a video to the inspection of said unit. And, but wait, you also get, so the bench back there, we're actually gonna be ditching that bench for a minute, and we're gonna be poking our heads under the hood of a vehicle that has an automatic transmission problem. If all goes as planned, we're gonna be diagnosing that transmission problem and fixing that transmission problem all in the same episode. So it goes without saying, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell too, so you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. Once again, my name's Robert and I will see you next time.